Good morning. God eftermiddag. It cult is up. Yes, it's called, is it called a sect or a cult? I don't know what the difference is. We can uh, we can find out in a couple of hours. <clears throat> what should I name uh, the stream today? Cult of swing trading. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go through today's game plan. Uh, let's see, spies and queues are about break even. All right, so game plan is, so Fastly got another downgrade. I think they also got downgraded yesterday. Uh, you know, watch the rising 10, rising 20 EMAs on the 60 minute chart. Uh, I don't think, you know, I, I really hope this thing goes for another one or two days. I would really love to see this thing go like 110 or something today, uh, but I am trailing the 20 EMA on the 60 minute chart as my stop now Like obviously it can go higher, but I don't want to give back too many profits too much profits or you know what wait I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna use it uh, The lows of this day uh, Just you know, we'll see we'll see it depends on what happens during the day, but you know, it's I don't want to give back too much Especially when a stock gets this extended, you don't, really don't necessarily want to sit through pullbacks. BLDP found, dipped intraday yesterday, but found support. Where did it find support? This magic yellow line called the 20 EMA on the 60 minute chart. Uh, GAN is just grinding sideways for now, raising my stop a little bit. Bealy. Just surfing the 10 EMS, sorry, the 10 moving average on the daily. PDD, same thing here. SC, surfing the 20 EMA. EPT just going sideways. Roku had a monster breakout yesterday. I did sell a tiny bit of my shares. Um, but this thing, you know, it just broke out on a weekly chart. Just broke out. I'm going to try to keep this for, for longer term. CS keeps grinding. RH looks like he wants to stop me out today. This never really went after I bought it, so always have to get rid of the laggards first. Uh, everything looks pretty good so far shopify looks like it's gearing for another move towards 11 1200 this and tesla are the leaders of the market 
as long as those keep going up, we, I think we're, we'll be fine. Livongo, this thing, I really hope this thing goes to high teens today, 100, like towards 120. Tesla, I am short, but the thing is, if it starts breaking these levels, like, look at one where it found support. It undercut the rising 20 EMA, and then it reclaimed, and now it's building higher lows. Okay, if this thing starts breaking out of this pattern, it's going to go to 16, 1700. I'm going to switch the same way I switched from long to short a couple of days ago, when it gapped up on this day. I'm going to switch from short to long. Because if I can find, like, an entry here, you can risk like 20, 25 dollars to potentially make another two, three hundred dollars on the upside. That's the way I look at it. MRNA, I bought a boatload of shares yesterday late day in the mid 64s, mid high 64s. I bought 30,000 shares. This thing could not break down. It uh, undercut the 50 day and then it started building higher lows. And now it had a breakout day yesterday. Zoom keeps inching higher. D dog looks good. Labo. Everything is just inching higher. Um, B and DX had some news. They're going to be ready with their vaccine, I think, by December or something. I have to double check the news. So this thing has a fundamental reason to keep. No, this is Yeah, AMD nice chart. Yes, it was a nice chart yesterday when it broke out near open. I agree. XP setup. Uh, it's just a random thin stock. I don't know. Stick to the leaders. Net, I sold some pre market. This thing keeps going higher. Raising my stop here. Um, Hopefully, next stop 45. SPAC, I bought this thing. I was too early on the first time around. I lost like 75,000 on it. Uh, I got stopped out. This thing uh, had news intraday. They're going to, or rumors, that they're going to merge with uh, Fisker, uh, EV maker Fisker. So, you know, it's the hottest theme around EVs. SPACs also, so it's a combination of two of the hottest themes, SPACs and uh, and EVs. So this was pretty much, uh, you know, I don't want to say no-brainer, but, you know, it kind of was a no-brainer, especially with the volume. So I rebought it when it, after it had dipped, undercut the VWAP, started building higher lows, and right here is where I rebought it. I bought, let's see, how many shares did I buy? I think I bought 70,000 shares or 75 or something like that. Uh, first time around, I had like 50 or 60,000 shares, and then I had a little bit more the uh, second time around. Sold before the close, sold some after hours, sold some pre-market. And I only have uh, uh, 33,000 shares left, so a little bit less than half left, uh, in case it wants to go to 20 or something. Uh, I'm actually going to move my stop a bit higher. So this was pretty pretty good one. Yeah, David. I hope you bought it. I'm just giving my opinion. Yeah, both SPC and AMD I passed on. It is a laggard. It's a piece of shit laggard, but you know what? Sometimes laggards work too. David is salty. Wait. 
you didn't buy it, right? Because you didn't buy it because I said it was a lagger and piece of shit. You did well. <laughs> Good for you. I wish I had bought it. But it's just not a momentum leader anymore. So that's why, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. All right. I'm also, like, fastly, I had it on short watch in case it did a you know, big gap up, blow off type of a move. But in uh, right now it's gapping down, so it's not on short watch. And Livongo too, uh, but you know, I hope these both keep grinding higher, and then maybe we get a short next week. I'm still long both of these pretty decent size. Yeah, but it was late day. It was, oh, not late day. It was midday. I wasn't streaming. Yeah. They keep downgrading fastly and it keeps going higier. AYTU, uh, oh yeah. It, 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 it's not even able to take out this 155 range yet. That's how shitty this thing is. It's AYTU. Other than that, I do have some watches, but nothing that looks like it's gonna trigger. NIO, I covered it yesterday when it took out those intraday highs. It started building higher lows. And when it took out this 14.14 area, I covered it all. And look at how, how it built these relentless highest, higher lows into the close. That's a sign of demand. When you have an extended stock doing something like this, that's you got to be careful as a short. And now it's gapping up on some news, I think. But hopefully it can keep grinding towards 20. So we get a, can get a nice short on it. Overstock I also covered yesterday, close too strong. You know, in a b relentless bull market, you gotta play defense when you're shorting. You really have to. Oh, UAVS is trying to trigger again. <clears throat> David, how about a phone call? <laughs> uh, David, you're a spoiled brat. <laughs> how about a phone call? I'm not really doing anything out of the gate, just don't see anything worthwhile. Maybe square? It looks like it's about to violate some support levels on the 60 minute chart. And it is getting extended. But right now, it looks like it's bouncing. Uh, Lulu? Uh, Lulu had a little bit of a breakout yesterday. I mean, look, it could work. It's not the fastest stock out there. Um, Look, if the market keeps going, this thing will go up, probably. But it's not a momentum leader, per se.
I, I took a starter short uh, square. Oh, all the EV stocks are breaking lower here. I got 15,000 shares uh, of square short now. Let's see if this thing can have some downside momentum. It's an extended stock breaking down on the 60 minute chart. That's what I see here. Oh shit, it's having some power down candles. Yeah, square is breaking down on the 60 minute chart now. It's below both the 20 and 10 EMAs on the 60 minute chart. Support becomes resistance. That's what you want to look for on these overextended names. Fastly. Um, we'll see how fastly closes. I'm not completely sold on it yet as a short. NIO, what's going on? Oh, NIO. Oh, gap and crap. Yeah, well, you can say I missed it. Wasn't really my setup. This workhorse looks vulnerable. I shorted a little bit of workhorse. FLGT, there's absolutely nothing here. Absolutely nothing. It's just a random stock. That's no good trend. It's a very shoppy liquid stock. <clears throat> Stick to the momentum leaders. Livongo short, yeah. Um, maybe. I want to see if the how they digest this morning weakness. 
I'm long both Fastly and Livongo at the moment, but if we keep weakening throughout the day, I may want to get rid of get rid of them at least. Maybe even go short Livongo. Right now there is a lot of weakness. I'm gonna use lose of the day as my stop for this back. This UAVS is triggering again. I just bought a hundred thousand shares of UAVS again for just for fun. <laughs> like this is the kind of stock you can risk fifteen cents. If it goes, it's gonna go up a dollar, two dollars. They keep pumping this thing. A lot of these extended stocks are holding up well. They're barely red on the markets being red, like Etsy, another extended name. Look how strongly it holds up. I'm not completely sold on this little uh, market weakness yet. Okay, now we're green apparently. Nasdaq is almost green. What's Square doing? Square is bouncing. Square is probably gonna stop me out. Look at Roku! Holy shit! This thing is going straight up! I got stopped out of workhorse apparently. Took a $30,000 loss on it. Took a little bit of a loss on it. It held the rising 65 EMA so far. This thing is a big support for the stock. mRNA is weak. Tesla, this thing looks so explosive, man. Oh, this thing does not want to go lower. He wants to go higher.
2 billion? Only 2 billion in shorts? That's nothing. That's less than... So you mean less than 1% of Tesla's market value is shorted? That's nothing. Nah, I can't be wrong. It has to be at least 50 billion. 20 billion? It's still nothing. Less than 10%, like 6 7%. There are stocks that are like 50% uh, shorted. Or maybe it's the dollar value in shorts, I don't know. eBay? It's a too slow of a mover. Ten percent of float. It's not too. That's not. It's not that much. I would be a very scared Tesla short. Like these people shorting on fundamentals or valuations. Like, oh man. L like look at Tesla. It's a very extended stock. Obviously, like y you can't disagree with this. Like it's a very it, you know it's a hugely extended. It's it's a mega cap stock that's up three hundred percent in four months. But but look at what it's doing. It's building higher lows. Look at this. Look at the sixty minute chart. You see this? Now what do you think will happen when it busts through this trend line? You can literally risk like twenty, twenty-five dollars. This thing could go to. I mean, it could easily go to sixteen, seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred. Why not? Yeah, but they get recycled. Like new people, new funds get short. The ones that were too early, they maybe hedged or got out. <clears throat> I, like I personally be believe Tesla is a bubble. Is in a bubble. Like I, I, I don't think, you know, this thing deserves to have this kind of a valuation. They, they have like less than half a percent of global auto sales, and it's the most valuable auto company. It's just, you know, I think it's a big bubble. But I, I follow technicals and not my opinions. I found that it makes me much more money. Well, I think too. I think also that electric cars are the future, or at least hybrids. Um, and Tesla is obviously the leader. We missed LMND. Um, yeah, well, I'm more pissed about I missed the short on it. I was short, but I, I got stopped out. Yeah, I got shaken out of the short. Super annoying. Um, but yeah. And UAVS do, is doing it. Is UAVS the new? Uh, what was the stock I used to trade? I always, I never made money on it. I don't even remember. It was some kind of a dollar stock. <laughs> IMPX, yeah. Is UAVS gonna be the new IMPX for me? Look at this IMPX now. What a piece of shit. <laughs> what a piece of shit. I think I traded like six times and I lost money five times on it. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. You can't make it up. UAVS. It's gonna be the same.
Oh, fuel cell is going. Oh, I should probably buy some fuel cell. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. The, the entry was several, like last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pass some fuel cell. The entry was here last week. I missed it. Oh, fuck it. I'm, I'm already in BLD BNB. I have exposure to this sector. And plug may be setting up again. If it can go sideways a bit. Like, we are getting into a market environment where the bases get shorter and shorter. Because we're in, like, in a runaway type of a market. You know what Tesla short reminds me of? Tesla reminds me of Tesla last year. When it looked like... You know, something like this. It only went sideways a few days. And then it broke out and just kept going. Or something like this, right? This is what Tesla reminds me of. This is what Tesla looked earlier this year. And then it broke out and, you know, went up another 50% in a few days. Th that's what's possible. Like, Tesla could go up another 30-50% in a week from here. That's what's crazy about it. I'm going to go in size long. I'm gonna do some pretty decent size. BE, yeah, BE, I think this thing goes to 20 plus. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna try to hold this for a longer term. They, they have some pretty exciting things going on. GSX. Okay, all my short candidates are shaping up. Next week is going to be very exciting. But, um, you know, can't be early on these things. mRNA is a piece of shit. No, WRTC, no, it's, no, I wouldn't add. Not a great setup. If you're long, this is, it looks great, but this is not a buy point here. Vissel? Vissel, what about Vissel? Uh... It's just a random pump stock. I, uh, you know, I don't see any edge here, really. If you know someone with, you know, a lot of followers is gonna come in and pump this thing, you know, sure. But there is no institutional buying in these things. There's, there's two types of stocks. You have the institutional quality stocks, which I'm mostly in, and then there are the pure like pump stocks. What you know, the ones the, that are driven by retail buying, by chat rooms, by Wall Street bets, you know, the Robin Hooder type of stocks. How can you different? Well, you know, just look at the share price. If, it, if it's a dollar or two dollar stock, or even a sub, sub dollar stock, that's it's not an institutional stock. Let's just say that. If it's a higher price stock that's trending and riding the rising 10 and 20 days uh, moving averages, that's an institutional quality stock. Your NAK shares. Yeah, this is one of the, yeah, it's a gold pump. I remember this thing from last year or no, from 2016. I traded in 2016. It's a very hyped up gold stock. They're sitting on some potentially big assets, but I they have to get permits and stuff like that and you know. Boom, boom, boom. 
Yeah. Yeah, I seen the article I linked yesterday. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I would want to be the um, sit in the reception of Robin Hood. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> because it's a matter of time someone with an AR-15 who's just, you know, gambled away his life savings on options and now he's a couple of hundred K uh, uh, in depth, in March in depth, turns up at, uh, at their offices. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Should you be fo no? What you, uh, lazy destroyer? What you should be focusing on is to spend a thousand hours studying stocks, studying charts. That's what you should be focusing on. Their office is in Sweden? No, no, it's not. Robin Hood doesn't have an office in Sweden. Uh, to rush uh, about AR a wait yeah AR are you look it's just a little random pump stock uh, you know if it sets up right now it's going straight down if it sets up starts spinning higher lows and starts breaking out you know maybe it can go higher Roku to 200. Oh my fucking god, this thing is amazing. You know what? I'm happy I didn't buy AMD and Space because Roku is outperforming them both. I'm getting cocky here. Well, you know, as if you read the article I read, uh, wrote yesterday, because they've been uh, aggressively focusing on growth and not investing in their own tech. So it's down like all the... I think, I don't know, they, they had some stats, like Robin Hood has been down like 50 times this year or something like that, which is pretty amazing. It's pretty disgusting. If you go to my Twitter and read the New York Times article about Robin Hood, it's, it's pretty disgusting the way they exploit people. Like, it's all about, you know, gamification and, you know, catering to the tr uh, gambling urges of people. It's a, sm it's, it's a smart business model, obviously, but it's disgusting. It really is. Yeah, yeah, because it's of the ease of getting in. Absolutely. And they also lose money faster than the <laughs> than the retail customers of the other uh, brokers. They even had numbers on that. Oh, UAVS! Is it gonna go to the moon? What do you got? Oh, look at the volume bar! What? Fuck this shit. I bought another 100,000 shares UAVS. Let's go. Let's go. So I have 200k now. Let's, let's go to the moon.
let's go to the moon. I don't know what the hell this volume bar was all about. There must have been some uh, chat room pump in this thing. 900k shares almost on the one minute chart. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it looks like SPAC took out the lows of the day and reclaimed. Oh, it held the pre-market lows, yeah. Okay. I didn't sell my SPAC yet. Uh, but if it takes out the lows again, I'm probably going to size down a bit more on SPAC. Oh, Zoom. Let's see if Zoom is starting to uh, speed up now. I think this thing could speed up, go to straight to 310, 320. This market is relentless. Never seen anything like it. Like Everything just keeps going higher. If you're in the right stocks, obviously. If you're in a, some kind of piece of shit, non-momentum leader, well... Then you're in a piece of shit, non-momentum non leader. Square is weakening more. Look at this weekly short on square. Why can't this thing pull back to like, I don't know, 115, 110? Yeah, UAVS, exactly. That's a momentum leader. <laughs> this is the this is a pump leader. <laughs> Don't talk about my portfolio like that. Yeah, it's kind of funny, uh, like the New York Times article I, I linked yesterday, which I've been mentioning like 10 times now. <laughs> they actually, you know, you have to fill out this form. And if you're inexperienced, it's illegal to allow option trading. But what they do is they kind of like nudge you. So you, do, so you at least, you know, get some experience. Like, so you don't fill in the like no experience. You click the like a little experience and suddenly you can uh, trade options like they, they you know it's kind of disgusting but it is what it is it's a very exploitative business Bro, 10 price star. Yeah, I know. Let's get to 10 bucks. It's just like IMPX almost went to 16 bucks. You remember that? <laughs> well, was it Mark was that was supposed to go to 16? I don't remember. Well, Mark actually did make a big move. I made a lot of money on Mark. But this IMPX was also supposed to have a big move. This is what deep value investing is all about. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. SRN, oh my god, SRN, no, really? This is the one I got stopped out uh, at six bucks. No, you, no, guys, no, SRNA is not having a breakout here. SRNE had a breakout here on this day late June where 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 we bought it that's when SRNE bro broke out now it's you know if you're long you should keep selling into these pushes there was a secondary entry on this day here but right now th this is not a breakout 
It's just an update. Looks like a market is weakening again. Hmm. I'm tempted to go short this uh, GSX. <clears throat> okay, so now we're starting to see some weakness, like a second leg. Uh, weakness in the markets. Uh, we tried to bounce a bit but couldn't. A lot of the momentum leaders look good though. So there's no reason to freak out. A lot of these overextended stocks they're you know holding up really well above their 10 and 20 EMAs on the 60 minute chart. But I am thinking about potentially sizing down on Fastly. Like Livongo holds up really well. Uh, but Fastly, if it starts losing this 20 EM, e EMA on the 60 minute chart, I'm gonna size down by half. XSBA. Good luck to him. Dun, 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 dun. It's gonna be a fascinating uh, thing when uh, these pump stocks st uh, stop working and we actually get a real pullback that lasts for a few months. It's gonna be fascinating to see how he and his crowd reacts to that. It's a, it's a, it's a study in psychology. Like David, po Dave Portnoy, he's like any other person who just gets involved in the stock market the only difference is he's, he's you know he's loaded and he only trades with a small part of his net worth but the way he trades is like this exactly the same way as any other a newbie to the stock market including me yeah exactly he has the green hammer of death and he, when he loses the, I think, what is it, 3, 4 million he trades with, he's still going to be worth over 100 million. But a lot of his hundreds of thousands of followers are going to go broke. That's the difference. They're going to lose everything they made during this bull run. And many of them are even going to lose more than that. But it's fun as long as it lasts. Yeah. Because we know how to navigate uh, weak markets. But if you believe stocks only go up, well, you may not know how to navigate the weak market. <laughs> Especially if you're a breakout buyer, if you, you know, as a breakout buyer, you get decimated pretty quickly uh, in, in a market where breakouts don't work. You can get decimated pretty damn quickly. I've been there. I've been there so many times. We have a sex cult. No, but did we agree we were going to do a suicide cult? By the way, what's the difference between a sect and a cult? Here, let's see. Sect versus cult. Sects are a breakaway group from more mainstream religion, tend to be in tension with cults are new religious movements fall outside this con uh, Okay, what the hell does this mean? 
and new religious movements fall outside this continuum and in contrast aforementioned groups of the have oh, fuck this is too advanced for me okay so we are a cult right yeah we're not a sect we're a cult we're trying to do a new thing Yeah, yeah, we are a cult, not a sect. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, mm, yeah. That's the difference. So sect is more like, not as extreme. A cult is more extreme. Yeah, we're gonna go for the extreme variety. Yep. No, it's the other way around. A cult is a more extreme version of a sect. MIC members, yeah. Are you going to become Charles Manson? Matt Manson, maybe. What's the difference between regular religion and cult? Uh, yeah. Uh, cheese media 5 So, what do you do when they're not? Are we talking about breakouts? Yeah, you wait. Sometimes you have to wait for months. Like, remember when the markets went lower, tanked from late February to, like, late March? I didn't buy any breakouts during this time. I was mostly, you know, trading VIX. I started, started shorting it a couple of weeks too early. Uh, but, you know, there were no breakouts. You just have to wait. This is not where the big money is, guys. You see this? Uh, let's see. This... It's not a great period to make money. Yeah, you can be lucky and, you know, catch a big down move in the markets and feel like a genius, you know. But, you know, like 35% declines in a month. They're like, you know, last time that happened was 2008 and before that was 1987 and before that was like in the 30s. This is where the big money is made, okay? The, oh, what the fuck is this? I didn't want this indicator. Uh... This is where you can double, triple your, quadruple your money with pretty little effort. If you have your setups down. Okay, you don't need to nail the bottom. Remember, I started buying breakouts somewhere here, like early April. Like this first up move, I kept shorting the triple ETFs like TQQ and SPXL. But then I was like, fuck, it's not working. Things are just going higher. And it wasn't until like... Early April, I started uh, buying breakouts. I think Rem Livongo was one of the earliest. I remember I bought Livongo here when they guided higher. Here in uh, like low 30s, thir 33 or something. That was one of the first ones I bought. So when you have a market that's trending lower or even tanking, you know... Yeah, obviously, for day traders, there's always something to do. For, but for a swing and position traders, that's the time to, you know, enjoy life. Get a hobby. Cultivate your gardening skills or whatever. Oh, man. Tesla looks so juicy. Those 20 billion in shorts, they're going to get their... They're going to get a new asshole. That's pretty much what's going to happen. This thing is going to go to 1,700. Find a girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> you only have two hour Twitch brain watching, not 24 seven. So we are a sect, not a cult. Yeah, I need to do better. No, I have never gone. Like, I've had a few days in my trading career when I haven't made any trades, but I'm a chunky. I, I, I have to do some trading every day. 
Uh, but I, I generally, you know, I'm aware when I'm boredom trading, so I do very little size, like no size. But it's, I'm a, I'm a, you know, it's all about being aware of your gambling urges. And now the markets are shaping up again. We're just in a sideways consolidation. I, I, I think the markets look very good. Let's see here. SPAC. Oh, SPAC. You found some support and now it's ripping. Reclaim VWAP. That looks great. I hope this thing goes to like low 20s next week. Oh my god, this Roku. Holy shit. This is what happens when you have a breakout of a range out of a range like this. This is amazing. It's in an, on its own planet right now. This is, uh, yeah. This thing went from a laggard to a leader. So I kind of anticipated it becoming a, a momentum leader. Uh, just because it took out this long, long range. And when you have a like a multi-year breakout, like this thing was a big momentum leader back in 2019, where I also traded it several times. And then it kind of became a laggard. And now, you know, like memorize these patterns. Memorize these patterns. This is why you should go back and study stocks on the daily charts, on the weekly charts. It's the same patterns over and over again. You just have to get off your asses. Or actually, you have to sit on your asses and, uh, and study these things. You, you have to get on your asses and study stocks. And obviously, a bull market is very helpful. Uh, which program? You can start with TC2000. You can go back like five years on the daily chart and like, uh, uh, let's say like, uh, like, you know, like 30 years on the weekly chart. You know, you can just do it on a TC2000. Uh, but if you want more daily charts, if you want to go back further than five years on the daily chart, uh, you can get like e-signal and someone mentioned big charts, I think is for free and you can go back along. No, trading view is great. Trading view is super good if you want to go. But everyone should get e-signal. That's like the minimum requirement if you want to be a swing position trader. I really think so. It's the, you know, they have great scans, great watch, li watch list management. It's a great platform. You can get the free version or whatever. You don't have to pay for it in the beginning if you're a new trader. But it's all about studying, all about studying. You have to invest in yourself. This is a profession like any, any else. Think about it. Like how, how long does time does it take to study for a profession? It usually takes three to five years, right, to get a degree. Trading is no different. Trading is no different. If you, if you want to become good at this game, you got to study. And the difference with trading with most other professions is if you suck, like if you're a really bad engineer, you can probably still get a job somewhere, right? If you're a bad, you know, programmer or a, you know, a shitty doctor, you're probably still going to be able to get a job and work, right? And you don't even have to be shitty. You, you can be a mediocre, right? And you can still have a job. Or if you're a, like a mediocre plumber. But if you're a mediocre trader, you're going to lose all your money. In trading, you, be, you have to be in the to top of your game. You have to be among the 3 to 1%, in the top 3 to 1% of all people who are actively trading stocks. Okay? Mediocre is not enough. You have to become great. If you want to make money... You have to be good at this. If you want to make millions per year, you have to be fucking great at it. 
but mediocre is not enough in this game. That's the big difference between trading profession and pretty much every other profession. <laughs> exactly, EJ uh, Miv Miv. Get off your ass and sit on your ass and study. That's exactly what I'm preaching. Cron. <sighs> Uh, where's the breakout? It's just a random piece of shit uh, stock stuck in a range. Absolutely nothing here. Focus on the momentum leaders. Yeah, exactly. You can't be a mediocre poke player. Or you can be, as long as all the other uh, players are worse than you. <laughs> yeah, overstock. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. This is why I covered yesterday uh, before the close, like... You know, you don't want to go short something like this over, you know. You don't want to go short overnight something like that's the same logic I had on NIO. You know, it's built this higher lows all day. I covered it all when it took out the intraday highs. And then it closed really strong. Not nothing you want to go short in a bull market, in a raging bull market like we are in. You, you know, you have to see the signs. I, I really hope this thing goes to 60 plus. I really hope. I just wish I hadn't passed on it. This thing had several really good... Okay, guys, I'm going to show you some textbook five-star breakout patterns, okay? Look, this is a five-star chart. You have a stock that doubles. This thing went up 600%, pulled back a little bit. Where did it find support? You see this magic line, this yellow magic line called the 20 day moving average that I keep yelling about like 50 times every day. Okay. This is where it found support. And if you go back and study thousands of stock charts, charts of leaders from every market cycle from you know, like in, from the 30s, from the 50s, 70s, 80s, 90s. You will see stocks found, find support on the same moving averages. There's nothing new under the sun. And then again, had another leg higher. And here it had a high tight flag breakout. Okay? On higher volume. Just like it had a higher volume breakout here. Two five-star setups. I even marked these things for breakouts. I saw these things as they broke out. But I passed on this because I thought there were more liquid stocks to play. This, this wasn't very liquid stock. I'm kind of busy. Think you could do the shards later? <laughs> oh, David. Uh, you're kind of funny in an annoying way. <laughs> uh... Rasa Alexis, you don't trade. You don't buy breakouts in a downtrending bear market. There are no breakouts in a bear market. There are still like swing trades you can do, mostly on the short side, but like kind of a bounce type of setup. So you kind of have to do more like mean aversion stuff. Reno is on vacation. Does Reno hate money? Why is Reno on vacation in a bull market? Does he hate money? Everyone, every trader who goes on vacation in a bull market must hate money. Idiot. Am I an idiot or is he an idiot? Both? <laughs> Fuck you, David. <laughs> Man, David hates us all. By hating me, he hates all of you. Just so you know, since I'm the cult leader, I, I am, I am, we are all in one being. An attack on me is an attack on everyone. Yeah, we are a cult. 
I haven't really decided what type of cult, but uh, let's just agree we're a cult. And my my, I, every, you have to do everything I say. So when I say you have to spend a thousand hours at least studying stock charts from uh, several different market environments, you all have to do it. No excuses, no vacations. X5M cult, yeah. <laughs> uh, CRSP high tide flag, no, not yet. Uh, it needs to go so sideways for a bit more. It's just a random extended stock right now. No relationships. <laughs> we all agreed on the sex cult? No, we didn't. I specifically said I don't want a sex cult. Suicide cult is better. What would your entry be for Tesla? Uh, you know what? You know, I, I have an order to cover my shares at 1, uh, 14.07. But, you know, what, as it starts breaking this 14, like today's highs, four, uh, where is this? No, wait. Yes, no, no, wait. This 14.03 area, that's like the earliest trigger point. And you can add at all these levels. You can take a starter 14.03, add 14.07 or 4.08 or whatever, and then maybe even add 14.17, 14.18. Uh, this thing looks so explosive. Holy shit. When you have an extended stock that does something like this, there is some serious demand for the stock. I'm getting excited. I want to get stopped out of this short. APT, um, yeah, it broke out uh, like a month ago. Um, yeah, it's finally starting to move. Look at where it found support. This yellow magic line I keep mentioning. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's an entry point here. The entry was when it broke out this 14, uh, $15 area. Now it's more of a continuation move. <laughs> it's a democratic sex cult. Uh, no, Durash, when I started, I followed alerts. I was in Team Sykes chat room. And when he sent like uh, messages that he had bought a stock, I bought together with hundreds of others. And then he sold it when all of us uh, pushed the price higher. And then I sold it and took a loss every single time. That's how I started. And then I went in another chat room and did the same thing. And then I was like, hmm, this is not working. I need to actually start studying and understanding how stocks move. Roku, holy fuck, yep, it is straight up, and now I've been studying stocks for, uh, well, for the first two years, I didn't really study that much, I, I was just following other traders, what they did, instead of understanding why they did it. But then in 2013, that's when I started, you know, Evernote and doing research in Evernote and saved all the charts and stuff like that, all tens of thousands of notes and observations. Yes, followers pri uh, push the price up. That's called a pump and dump. That's what all these chat rooms are doing. An outside day? No, it's an inside day. This is called an inside day on, te on Tesla. <laughs> so you were front running the front runner. That's uh, that's like second level thinking, hype stock trader. Or hype stock trading. That's like second level thinking. You're a smart guy. Front running the front runners. That's, uh, yeah.
All right, Tesla is starting to move here. Um, I just covered my Tesla. I'm not long yet. I, I covered my, my short. I covered my short. I'm not long yet. Okay, I bought, I bought 1,400 shares of Tesla. A starter. This is a starter for me. I'm gonna use the lows of the day as my stop or something like that. Exactly. Tesla is in a ludicrous mode right now. Anyone have been in a Tesla and they, uh, you know felt the acceleration? I borrowed uh, I borrowed the Model X from my local Tesla dealership uh, like this spring. The um, the performance one, 2.8 seconds from zero to 100 kilometers per hour. It's insane. Holy fuck. You have to hold on to your kidneys. You really... Okay, Tesla. Fuck you. I bought another thousand shares of Tesla. I have 2,400 shares. That it, It's enough now. No, fuck it. I'll, bought, I'll, I'll buy another, okay? I'll, or wait, no. 13.7. That's like uh, $20. Wait, 88.9. No, $30 stop. No. Okay, so I'm risking like 75k on this trade right now. Uh, okay, I'll buy another 100 shares, so I have a 2,500 shares even. Okay, great. Twenty five hundred shares, let's go. Do you like Tesla build quality? No, it's like the worst piece of shit ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. The build quality is absolutely horrible. Why? Why the build quality is horrible? I don't know. Ask Elon Musk. It's like the stock market. That <laughs> doesn't matter. Just buy it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are fanatic about about Tesla. Like, I get it. It's like of a cult stock, and they have a cult followers. You know, you you do get a little bit of a futuristic feeling when you're in a Tesla, uh, as long as you don't mind the, you know, the shitty build quality and the horribly bad seats. But you know. It's just, you know, I get it. Like, I get it. Like, I'd like to, like, I, I'd prefer an electric car too, but, like, if BMW made, like, an X5M with an electric motor, that would be, I would be all over it. Even if it costs, like, 200k, I would buy it. There's no doubt the electric is the future. There's like no doubt. It's just a matter of time. Uh, price target, whatever, when, uh, you know, the sky. Porsche Taycan, yeah, but it's a small car. I, I want an SUV, that's the thing. I want an SUV. And I don't want two cars. What does a Tesla cost in Sweden? Well, it depends on, uh, well, you know, look, any configuration Tesla, Whatever it costs in the U.S., you can add 30%. That's, that's what it costs in Sweden. So if you have a 
Tesla with a certain configuration costing 100k in the US, it, it probably costs like 130k in Sweden. It's much more expensive in Sweden. Uh, BMW is fun to drive, okay? The way like the uh, car responds to, to the wheel and the build quality, especially on the like expensive models, it's like, like Tesla has no chance. Like Tesla is, it's like a Mercedes, like it's very unresponsive. It, it's, you know, it, it has fast acceleration if you just wanna go in a straight line, but it's not really that fun to drive, like, you know, kind of curvy road and stuff like that. It's it's not that fun, but like an X5 M, that's a fun car to drive. It's very sporty. <laughs> Look, I've driven like every single car. Like I, 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 you know, test drive cars every couple of months. Like I've driven them all. Porsche and BMW are my favorite. They're the most fun to drive. Audi, so-so, Mercedes, so-so, Range Rover, so-so. McLaren, I haven't driven a McLaren. Yeah, Porsche with an electric engine, yeah, Porsche Taycan. I actually pre-ordered it. But then I didn't buy it because, you know, I, I, you know, in that case, I would have to have two cars. I only want one car. I don't want two cars. Honda and Toyota. No, like the thing BMW has made it their thing. There is, you know, it's it's you know it, it's kind of hard to describe it. Like if you're not a fan of driving, you don't you won't understand it. But if you li actually like driving a car, you know you you will you will feel a difference in driving certain different types of cars. It's kind of hard to explain. It, like it's for me, it's very important. There needs to be. It needs to be fun. Some cars, even though they may be like luxury, luxurious and sporty, they're just not fun to drive. And that's that's the thing with Tesla. Like, or the the Model X. Like I I test drove the Model X. I had it for two days. It's just not that fun in the same way. Yes, the acceleration in a straight line, that's like nothing else comes close to it, okay? I'll hand it to Tesla. That's like the most amazing thing ever. You, you really have to, if you have kidney problems, you probably shouldn't be in a Tesla. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Okay, enough bashing Tesla. Let's get this thing to 2000 now. Look, I love Tesla. I'm gonna buy ten. T Look, if 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 this thing goes to two thousand, I'm gonna buy the most expensive Tesla Model X, and I'm gonna give it away to someone in chat. Agreed? Let's do this. Tells? What tells? What's tells? No. Oh, UAVS is going higher. Look at that. Exhaust noise. Uh, I like exhaust noise. Not too much, but I kind of enjoy it. But uh, I also need a huge space for luggage, and I, I I also like the high riding position. Like for me, once I went SUV, I'll I'll never I'll I I won't go back. I I, I just can't be in a sedan or like in a regular car. 
Like in an SUV, you feel like a king of the road. <laughs> if it goes to 16, you all get cars. You can get, uh, you can, you can, I'll send a model car to everyone. I'll send a toy car to all of you. What are the white lines? Those are my stock barriers. I have two stuff. Since I, I bought 100,000 shares and then I bought another 100,000 shares, I have different uh, stop points for those. But you know what? I'm going to raise them. I'm going to raise both of them a little bit. This, you know, it, at this point, this breakout shouldn't come back. Like, it, this thing should go straight to 2 plus now. Audi S8? Yeah, they look great. Like, Audi S8 looks like an Audi SQ8. They look so beautiful. Oh, by the way, yeah, RSQ8, I was actually, uh, <laughs> I was actually about to buy an Audi RSQ8. I, I didn't tell you guys. I, I'm not a, like, BMW fanboy, like, I'm not a fanatic, but I actually was about to buy, like, me and my girlfriend, we were, you know, test driving and stuff like that, uh, an Audi RSQ8. This thing is actually the fastest SUV on the Nuremberg ring. Um, it's it's an amazing looking car. Uh, it's a bit smaller than X5, but the thing is, then we went to the BMW dealership and we saw the X5 M, and I didn't even know the X5 M had been released yet. I I had in Sweden. So once we saw that, we're like, holy shit, we want that car instead. And so we went and got the car. Or I'm gonna get it in a few weeks. This thing is just so much much more practical than the RSQ8. It looks amazing. I just keep looking at pictures of, of, of my car. <laughs> I, ca I can't wait until I get it. What's the point of making money in the markets if you can't uh, if you can't spend it on some vulgar vul vulgarities, right? Look at where NIO found support. You see, you see this magic purple line on the 60-minute chart. NIO bounced off this magic line. Dun, 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 Footballer black, yes. Uh, it's a demo car. They they uh, they de they demo it to their premium customers, my dealership. Um, so it's on the road. So it's gonna be a slightly used when I get it. It's not brand new. Because the waiting times to get a factory one was like six months, so we had to either wait six months to get a like a brand brand new one, or wait two months to get the, their demo car. Uh, so yeah, we we opted for the wait to wait uh, two months. Imagine waiting six months for your dream car. That's like torture so fastly is right on the magic yellow line here if it can't bounce off this line now I'm probably gonna start sizing down a little bit on my on my long <clears throat> holy shit Roku this is amazing. CCL or CCI? CCL, yeah. 
Yeah, I see these um, uh, cruise lines and airlines. They're all uh, they're all rallying. The problem is they're rallying into uh, these declining moving averages. That's the problem. Uh, but NCLH has a nice chart. On the weekly chart, look at this, how tight this thing is. And it's right at the declining 20 uh, moving average on the weekly. I think next week, if it gets above the 1650 area, I could be alone. I'm going to go size on this thing. A lot of the area, yeah, they tried to break lower, but now they're kind of bouncing again. Oh my god, he had to wait 11 months for his car? Oh my god. You still long Nari? I've never been long Nari. It's too thin. But yeah, it had an epically good looking breakout yesterday. Like a really nice breakout. Perfect. Picture perfect. But this didn't even hit my scans because it's too thin. Um... Yeah, I test drove the Range Rover, not the SVR, but I test drove one of the other models. Uh, but I kind of didn't get it. Like, it's not as fun to drive as BMW. Yeah, I know. The RSQ8 is a little bit cheaper version of the... Yeah, or actually a lot cheaper than the Urus, I know. Uh, yeah, you, the German car parts are very expensive. Lamborghini, Terzo, Millennio. I'm not into, like, these types of sport cars. Like, I want the sporty SUV, that's all. I don't really need, want the sports car. It's kind of funny. Like, when you're younger and poor, you, everyone wants a sports car. And once you get rich, you don't really want it anymore. Wait, is this a real car? Holy fucking shit. Look at this thing. I, I can't decide if it's really good looking or if it's really bad looking. It can't be a production car, right? It has to be just like one uh, uh, prototype. How the fuck do you drive this thing? Look at the... I mean... <laughs> it's like one inch off the ground. So if you buy the gar car, do you get the chic too? Do you guys know? Uh, CGC... Uh, it's... Look, guys... The Mariana sector is dead. There's nothing here. It's like the it's been a laggard for like two years now. There's nothing here in that Mariana sector. I know a lot of people are crazy about these stocks. There's nothing here. They're dead. They're super laggards. Wait for them to set up and become momentum leaders. Yeah, Koenig said is um, yeah that's a local Swedish uh, car producer. They just make these casual supercars. That cost like three, four million. She's married. Wait, so if you buy a Lamborghini, you get a married chick? Those Italians are perverted as fuck, I have to say that. If you can afford the car, you can get any chick you want. That's true. But you may not get the right type of chick. You, you're gonna get the ones that uh, like you for your money. C A R R. Uh, it's just a random stock. I, I, you know, it's not a momentum leader. S Lamborghini Cien. Oh, it's a hybrid, really. Lambor. Uh, about time they start making, um, uh, you know, hybrids. Oh. Wow. I have to say, these cars look good, but 
what what would I do with something like this? Like, go to the grocery store? My grocery store is a five-minute walk from my house. Like, I mean, what would I do with this thing? I could only drive it like four or five months per year. I get it if you buy, live in like Florida or California or, you know, something where you, where you have a good climate. You can drive these things all around. But in Sweden, you, you can't really have a car like this. Or you can, but, you know, it's going to sit in your garage for half of the year. It looks amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> Leave it in your garage. Yes. Exactly. Well, there's all these parking spots at my local grocery store, so that's not a problem. Exotic sports car. Yeah, you gotta get the limited version, li limited editions. Yeah. Those are the ones usually. Yeah, I'll, I'll just post a picture of me beside a, a Lamborghini and yeah, there's going to be 500 people in my chat the next day. Uh, thoughts on lemonade, except I like lemonade. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the e ideal entry was yesterday when it broke out of this range on the 60 minute chart. Uh, right now it's just extended. You have no edge buying it now. This SHLL looks intriguing though. <clears throat> What's Nicola doing today? Phone workhorse. Okay. <clears throat> I also like this Macy's for a bounce. Also looks really good on a weekly chart. Has big range. This thing could easily go up back to 10 bucks once it breaks uh, this range here, this $7 area. Maybe we start getting rotation out of growth into some of these beaten down uh, names next week. That's something I'm act actively... Uh, because we've already had several of those rotations. This is gonna be the third rotation, I think, since the March lows. The third rotation between uh, growth and value, or whatever you want to call it, between extended and beaten down. Tesla, why is it not going to 1500? Guys. Elon, you know what needs to happen? Elon needs to tweet that he thinks Tesla is so overvalued. That's what he needs to do, and we're going to go to 1700 in a few days. You remember when he said here? Back when the stock, a few months ago, when the stock was in the eight, seven, eight hundreds, he thought the stock price is too high. <laughs> That's Tesla in a nutshell. And he also did it back in 2013. He said he, he thought Tesla stock is too expensive or too high or whatever he said. <laughs> oh man. It only, like, like, Tesla and Elon are such special cases. Like, no other CEO would get away with something like this. No other. N not a single one. There are some, uh, like, CEOs trying to uh, emulate uh, Tesla and Elon Musk behavior. Like, the Nikola CEO, who thinks he's the next Elon Musk. He's, you know, if he, his Twitter is also kind of fucked up. But he's no Elon uh, Trevor Milton, I think his name is. Trevor Milton. Nicola Trevor. He thinks he's the next Elon Musk.
Maybe he's the next Elon Musk. I don't know. Okay, Square is finding some support. Let's see if it can get rejected on the 20 and 10 EMAs now that both have started sloping lower. Yeah, exactly. The Tesla cult. <laughs> you know what's a cult? The Tesla Q cult. That's a cult. Holy shit. These, these guys have been so negative on Tesla. Not only, not only on this like stock. Like I get it if you think Tesla is like overvalued. But really like being super bearish on Tesla and their product. You know, you know that's just stupid. And they've been wrong for like five, seven years or whatever years. I, I can't do math. And, you know, Tesla just keeps executing. Okay, yeah, they have shitty build quality. You really don't, you, you, you pay a premium price for a, like, for not a premium car. But, you know, look, it's, it's, it's still, it's like, you know, they're a leader in electric. Like, no one is even close. They built their supercharger network. No one else is even close. Like, you can't be bearish on that, right? But you can obviously be bearish on the valuation. That's another thing. Tesla Q is a cult. It really is. Yeah, I read something about it. They stole the Tesla design and uh, patented it. Yeah, I, I read something about it. What the hell is a cubic zirconia, man? These things are, you know, you, you're uh, using some fancy words. I don't know what cubic zirconia means. Yeah, quote the raven. Yeah, I, I unfollowed him. I, I couldn't take it. Like, he's constantly, like, so bearish on everything. And when he goes long a stock, he went long this FTR. He was super bullish. Frontier Communications. He even posted, like, a Seeking Alpha article. Let's see here. Uh, here, here. Look at this. Here, FTR report exceeded all expectations. My personal opinion that equity has zero trouble retaking six to seven on this pivot. Upgrades likely coming. Okay? And the stock never saw that price again. Look at what the stock did. Just kept going. These are the stocks he's bullish on. Like everything else, all these, you know, Tesla and all these SaaS names. Oh, they're a bubble, blah, 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 yada, yada. Right? Look at this thing. And I was bankrupt. <laughs> Last trade was at 26 cents, right? I mean, like, this guy has, you know, this guy has no business, you know, having a following on Twitter. I, I just couldn't take it anyway. Like, he has some good takes on a bunch of things. But, you know, when someone who tweets, like, 50 tweets per day, and maybe only 10% of their tweets are, like, you know, value adds... I, you know, you got to unfollow. There's a lot of good people I unfollowed that have value takes just because they tweet a lot and most of the tweets are not value adds. You have to find the ones that don't tweet like a lot and most of the tweets are value adds for what you're trying to achieve, which in my case is making money. Oh, wow, look at this lithium stock. Why can't LAC, which is also a lithium stock, make a move like this? It's obviously very liquid. 
but holy shit. <laughs> you gave a fake diamond to your wife? Oh, come on. What I think of, of Arna? Um, uh, it looks pretty decent. It looks pretty decent. It looks, yeah, it looks great. You know what? I kind of like this thing. I like the shard. It keeps riding. It's not like a five star, but it looks pretty decent. I'm actually going to put it on my watch list for next week. <coughs> next week. If Biotex keep going, this thing is going to go to 80. Could we get some follow? Just go to my Twitter. Oh, you're just you're choking? <laughs> Tesla? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Man, now I'm getting regrets. I should have bought more shares, but it's a big position. Like, it's a three and a half million dollar position. I, I mean... Should I go heavier? Should I go even heavier? Okay, okay, okay. I'll buy a few more. I I'm gonna up my position to uh, four million. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm a three. Okay, I'm I, I bought another three hundred shares. Uh, let's see. Okay, three point ninety seven. Three point nine seven million. Okay. Uh, 15 I'm, I'm risking like 100k on this trade, a little bit more than 100k. Uh, 50, if it, if it doesn't work. Wait, what? Oh, shit! Oh, man, I, I just accidentally sold my Tesla. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot, I need to get back in. I fat-fingered. What am I doing? Oh, I'm like the biggest idiot ever. Okay, I got back in. How much did I lose on the slippage? Okay, great. So I fat fingered it at fourteen eighteen. I had to bite back in the uh, mid fourteen twenties. I, <laughs> oh, I lost two dollars on the slip. Oh, fucking idiot. Oh, I was gonna put a stop on it, and uh, well, let's just say it didn't go. That. Oh. What's it? Trading day without the fat finger experience, right? That actually kind of sounded dirty. Yeah, I mostly use market orders. How much market value do you think comes from fat fingers? I don't know. I I ninety five percent of my trades are uh, market. Usually, when I like sell partials, I I use like a um, uh, limit order. But when I like buy a position or get stopped out, I always use market orders. I don't believe in penny pinching. You either go for the big moves or you don't. And I've, be, I've been in so many instances when I try to like do limit orders on a breakout and just go straight up and I end up missing the move. Or, or when I get stopped out or something, I do, try to do limit orders and wait for a bounce that never comes. I think uh, using market orders, obviously you have to do it on liquid stocks. You can't trade too big for, a, for, a, for any stock. Uh, market orders are the cheapest way to trade, I really do. Took me many years to realize it. Limit orders are for suckers.
Uh, AAXN. That's the old Taser, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually setting up. It's a very thin stock, but it's kind of flagging. It's a slower uh, WRTC. Yeah. Yeah, exactly to rush. On a great, you know, yeah, exactly. You do the, your, you try to get your price, but you never get it. And usually, you know, when you use limit orders and you get filled, especially when a stock pulls back, you don't want the breakout to pull back. You want to be able to, you want to buy it with a market order, and then it has to go straight up, like Roku did when I bought it in the. Like 130, what's my average in Roku? 138, 88. So high 138. Like I bought, well, it did pull back a little bit, actually, it did. But then it's, you know, it's been straight up since. It never violated any uh, support areas. That's what a good breakout does. Or when Tesla broke out. Why am I not getting any shards? Like when Tesla broke out here, Went straight up, and when it broke out here, oh, I'm so happy I re-added because I got stopped out on this day, where where it actually ended bouncing of the rising 20 day, and then I re-added, I re-bought on this day here. I I realized my mistake. Sometimes when you sell a great stock, you know you just have to rebuy it a slightly higher. You can't miss a forward to miss. You can't afford to miss a move like this. How much do I pay in commissions? Um, well, uh, it depends on how many low price stocks I pay. Like I've had days when I paid like twenty thousand in commissions. <laughs> there was a day a couple of months ago I traded. I don't remember how many, I, th I think I traded, I don't know how many million shares I traded, but there are many millions of shares. But I, w I, I probably pay 20, 30k, 40k in commissions every month. Do you hold my positions over the weekend? Dude, many of my positions I've been in for months. Fastly, I bought it early May. Twilio also bought it early May. Mercado Libre, I bought it late, okay, okay also early May. Uh, but I've, I've had some positions I've been in since April. Uh, which one? Uh, Livongo. Well, actually, Livongo, I sold it. I was out of it for a couple of days. Then I rebought it. Another example of realizing your mistake and rebuying a great stock. But Livongo, I bought it early April. So, yes, I do hold my positions over the weekend. SC? Yeah, SC, yeah. No, yeah, wait. SC. No, that's early May also. Centerpoint Securities is my broker. Does MGNX have a setup? No. <clears throat> yeah, PRTS. Yep. Th yeah, it was almost too good to be true. I had to actually check if it was a buyout or something, but it wasn't. And look at this thing. This is a <laughs> five-star chart. Look at this. Boom. ZI, it's a recent IPO. Uh, uh, not really. Nah. Not yet. How do I find big earnings growers before they get going? Well, you have to keep track of them. You have to keep track of all the earnings. All the stocks have great earnings. My A and B, B watch list, there's 45 plus 32 stocks. These are the best, fastest growing stocks with the best technicals. And then I have my C watch list where I, there are, you know, 
like slower growing stocks that don't have as good uh, momentum and technicals. So I have what, the total of 45, 47, 77, 81, 141 stocks. I manually update every quarter when they report earnings. You gotta keep, you gotta be on top of these things. No one else is gonna do the work for you guys. You gotta do this work all yourself. You gotta be on top of all of these things. You have to track the best of the best and you have to trade the best of the best and you gotta be ready. When these things go, they go. You gotta be ready. <clears throat> Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not really waiting for CI to set up. I have it on my watch list. This thing has great revenue growth, but right now it's it's kind of thin for me. I'm probably not going to trade it unless it sets up like a five star short. I and no. Yeah, it's not going away. I'm thinking is this thing building another you know, little flag here? Is, is it gonna go higher? Right now it keeps riding the 20 uh, moving average. Mm. Wait, why uh, is my watch list? Wait, is the market fading again? No, it's not. No, the market looks fine. Uh, fastly. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Where, wh what line did it find support on? You, you see this magic yellow line I keep talking about on the 60-minute chart. S back uh, looks like it may be breaking lower. Um, I'm gonna size down if it takes out the lows of the day. CCL, um, yeah, but it still looks shitty, that's the problem, it's just having a random update. Why am I not getting any shards? Okay, guys, all of you who are new here, uh, go to my Twitter and look at my pinned tweet. There's two videos there. You, you need to watch those videos to understand more about my methodology. It's not complete. I'm going to do another video that's going to be like two hours where I explain things in detail. But it, it's, you know, just to, to get you guys started. Dun, 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 dun.
No, I'm just gonna do the video. But yeah, I could probably do uh, like the uh, explain uh, uh, whatever. You, you you can you type it in chat and then you get some links. Caesar. Uh, yeah, potentially. I like a uh, pen and uh, what's the other one? Eri more. Uh, they have more uh, more volatility. They're much more volatile. These things look great. Pen and ERI. Caesar has only ADR of 3.1. That's very very low. Look at Pen has ADR of 8.6, and uh, and ERI has an ADR of 9.3. That's three times more than uh, Caesar. So it's 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 gonna be a much better trade. They're all in the same sector. <sighs> okay, now things are getting boring here. I'm gonna do one more scan. Plug bouncing nicely of the rising 10 day. Come on, UAVS. Go to two bucks at least. Make me happy. Holy shit, Roku is absolutely relentless. I'm up over 200k on this trade. Pretty sweet. I, sh I wish I had bought more. I only bought 12,000 shares. I should have bought like 15,000 shares. Why didn't I buy 15,000 shares? AMD is not participating and SPC is building higher lows on the 60 minute short. Okay. BE is about to take out yesterday's size. Yeah, nothing more to add. Things look just amazing. Just a relentless bull market. We will have a pullback eventually, but you know the market could still go on for weeks and weeks before we get any pullbacks. Let's see if this MDB is can find support on this rising 65 EMA. If it can't, I'll sell it. <laughs> oh, David, you're relentless. No, I don't want your phone number. I'm not gonna call you one. Like, I didn't, you know, no. I'm not gonna call people up when I find something. I'm not giving you fish, I'm just teaching you how to fish. Come on, man. 
Uh, hey guys, do you want a Friday PNL? You want a Friday PNL? Is it Friday? Yeah, it is Friday. Yes? No? But David, your opinion doesn't count. Of course everyone wants to see a Friday PNL. My 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 job is to motivate you and inspire you, okay? And also brag a little bit. It's nothing crazy. I sized down a bunch of stuff yesterday, so but I, I just realized Livongo is probably almost a million dollar trade for me. But I sized down quite a bit yesterday. No brag, just fact, exactly. This is not bragging, it's inspiration, okay? No, but seriously. Like, if you, if you don't see, you like, the thing is, I, 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 I didn't think it was possible to make more than like 10, 10 grand in a day once I saw someone post it. Like, I, I remember someone posted a 50k day like back in like 2013 or 2012, I didn't even believe it was possible to make that much money. So you kind of need to see these numbers. Like this is my portfolio right now. Like Tesla is red right now because I took a small loss on my short. Now I'm obviously long. Uh, I, I locked in a little bit on net. I took a loss on workhorse. But right now, you know, 3.3 million in unrealized profits. MRNA I'm down a little bit on and MDB too. This is this is what happens if you have a solid process. If you have spent thousands of hours of studying the stock market, okay? Studying how stocks move. This is what's possible. I started with like 3, 4K back in 2011. I had no idea what I was doing. I blew up three times, okay? This is not easy, but it is possible. You need to apply yourself. Like I said before, you can't be a mediocre trader. You can be mediocre in any other profession. You can still provide for, you, for yourself and your family. In trading, if you're mediocre, you're going to lose money. You need to be at the top of your game. You, be, you have to be among the best. You have to put in more hours than anyone else. And not just you know, doing some random things. You, you need to study. Okay? You need to study. Go back. Look at, this, look at big moves. Like, like NVIDIA is a big market leader over the past uh, five years. Okay? Just go back. Study the weekly chart. Look, where did it find support? Look at this. Look at these magic lines. Look at this purple and yellow lines you know there may be something there but you have to study it you have to believe in these things look at the 10 and 20 and 50 day moving averages on the daily chart like these things all these things they move the same way okay you have to find these patterns and w once you learn the patterns once how stocks move and when they move and which stocks move you're gonna make millions. But you have to put in the work. And the weekend is a great time to put in the work. Go study a couple of hundred charts during the weekend. Look at the weekly charts. Look at the daily charts. Look at the big movers. How did they move? Where did they find support? How what did the breakouts look like? Uh, you can, I think TC2000 you can get for free. Otherwise you can use TradingView. It's also great. TradingView is very good if you, but they don't have any scans, I think. I think TC2000, the free version, is pretty good. What was my first big win back then? Back when? I pay 30% in taxes. Yeah, GSX is kind of starting to roll over. I don't want to short it over the weekend. I don't know. Uh, I'm not really... I think it's going to find support on the rising 10 EMA and then it's going to go higher. T 
tell us the worst moments? I'll, I'm gonna do that, yeah. Not today. Your daily PNL must be red. Where do you get that from? Or yeah, you know, it could be because I took a loss in uh, workhorse, and I also I think. Uh, no, I don't think it's red. No, no, I no. It my daily PNL is green. Because my other stocks are up kind of, kind of a lot, many of them. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, you too, David. Uh, HMNY started... Well, HMNY is the stock that made me financially independent. Um, that's the stock that started a run. Like, I was stuck in a rut between... You know, for several years, I was stuck between three, four hundred k, five hundred k in account size, and then HMNY started a run where my account went from five hundred k to five million in like, no, sorry, not five million, five hundred k to two and a half million in like six months, five months. HMNY started that. There was, there were many other stocks too. Um, <clears throat> But I already had like 400k in my accounts before then. All right, guys. But it's not about one to two trades. It's about making hundreds or thousands of trades in a year, right? It's about consistency. We, we're not here to get lucky. We are here to get guaranteed rich. Okay. If you want to get lucky, go buy a lottery ticket. Go do options a la Robin Hooder style. If you want to gamble, go somewhere else. We are here to get consistency, consistently lucky. Okay, we are here to develop an edge. <laughs> yeah, you know the thing is, I I was really I really wanted an assistant before, uh, but now like I don't really do any advanced stuff. I don't really watch a lot of stuff, so I don't really you know need an assistance assistant anymore all right guys thanks for joining hope you had a great week hope you got some value out of the stream and i'll see you next week on monday and uh, this video will be up or this stream will be uploaded to youtube so you can watch it there uh, have a great weekend and don't forget to study at least a couple of hundred stocks go back as far as you can to study the patterns Focus on the leaders, okay? Focus on the stocks that went up the most, on the liquid names. Don't waste with the uh, micro cap, uh, small cap ones. Look at, just look at the large caps. Just look at the large caps. Go back 5, 10, 20 years or whatever. Okay, guys, thank you. See ya.